It is good to dwell in the house of the Lord. Um, I can still remember when I first realized I needed God and I couldn't do anything on my own. I was, I think, about 12 years old and I realized that in myself dwelt no good thing. I wanted to talk a little about uh, Saul when he was walking, which is Paul now, was walking down the road to Damascus and he saw Jesus. In Acts, not, Acts chapter 9, it says, And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. I can remember when I had to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? I was just a child. Now that I think back and I thought I was so old. <laughs> but I remember when Jesus came into the picture, all my excuses seemed to disappear, and it was only him. You're exposed, and you realize that you're not adequate. You need a savior. You need a mediator between you and God. Romans 7, verse 18 Again, it says, in my flesh dwells no good thing. Philippians 4, 13. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In our flesh we can do nothing, but in Christ there's nothing that is impossible. Amen. Christ gives the strength we need to get through trials. We couldn't get through one day in our lives successfully if Christ were not with us, helping us to glory. And he uses the Spirit to help us with that. Without the Spirit, we would have no edification and no conviction. No, we, we, we would be lost without that conviction telling us we need to change. We need, we need God. God is our refuge and, and strength, a very present help in trouble. He promised he would help us. And in Second Peter, verse 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. And in Hebrews, it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? He asks so little of us to die in this temporal life and inherit eternal life. We have eternal life that is waiting for us, unbroken fellowship with the Father. How wonderful that will be to never have to leave the house of the Lord. Amen. Today, when, when today is over, we're all going to be going our separate ways. And, but in that day, we'll never have to leave each other. We'll be with each other eternally yes. and not be um, broken by the bands of time. We, we'll be able to see all the brethren who we've missed seeing because time was in our way. It seems so hard to the world. They don't see that they're going to lose it all anyhow. Why not, why not lay it down willfully and in, ret in return receive the reward that's waiting for you? Amen. All he asks is that we believe the record God gave of his son. If we believe, then we will freely relinquish all, all of the things that stand in our way. My closing thought is one of my favorite scripture songs that we used to sing it. Uh, Independence Hill and it's, he gave me beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness I am a tree of righteousness the planting of the Lord and his name is glorified